Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will present to you my capstone presentation on Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporation. I chose this as my capstone because on spring break, I went to California and experienced a great Warner Brothers tour. I was so interested in the company, along with producing movies and shows, that I thought, why don't I do my capstone on Warner Brothers? So guess what? I did. Today I will talk to you about how Warner Brothers has evolved over time and some of its key turning points to its success. First, I will talk about its history. Four brothers, Jack L. Warner, Albert Warner, Harry Warner, and Sam Warner, as shown here, founded the company Warner Brothers Entertainment. They started their career by making moving pictures in Ohio and Pennsylvania. In 1903, they began buying theaters. By 1913, they started producing films on their own. Eventually, in 1918, they opened a company on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, California, which ended up to be Warner Brothers Studio. Since the brothers founded the company, it was named after them, Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporation. It became a large entertainment group, movie studio, marketing of music recording, music videos, and more. The company Time Warner owned Warner Brothers Company. However, Warner Brothers was not always owned by Time Warner because Warner Brothers was founded before Time Warner. Anyway, during the last year of World War I, they produced their first movie shown across the U.S. called My Four Years in Germany. A few years after the movie was produced, in 1923, Warner Brothers formally became a fully incorporated company. After Warner Brothers became a fully incorporated company, they renovated the studio at a cost of $250,000. They added additional dressing rooms along with the current ones, new stages, and 113 meters by 43 meters of land. At that time, they were shooting six films. They just added new electric plants, and it lit all the films. As I mentioned earlier, Warner Brothers' first movie shown across the U.S. was My Four Years in Germany. One of the six films that Warner Brothers was producing in 1923 was called The Gold Digger. This movie was extremely successful. The Gold Digger was from the Avery Hepwood Broadway play. Where the North Begins was also produced at that time. This film was very successful. However, a film that did fail at that time was called The Tie That Binds. Fortunately, the two other films were remarkably successful. There are Warner Brothers studios in many different places of the world. There is a studio in Burbank, California, which is the most known one, but also in New York City, Canada, Atlantic, Georgia, Australia, and London. However, most of the movies and shows are filmed in the studio in California. There is also a place across from the studio in California called The Ranch, which is where the Friends Fountain is. If you have seen Friends, you might know what the fountain is. If not, it is in the theme song for each episode. On the top right is the Friends Fountain. I think it is an advantage that Warner Brothers has many studios in other places besides California because it helps get their name out there and gives them more places to do films and shows, which might give the film a different background that might not usually be seen in a certain place. For instance, Harry Potter was filmed in the London studio, which helped that movie by providing them with other sets and backgrounds. The picture on the top left is the studio in London, and the picture on the bottom is the studio from California. Warner Brothers is one of the most successful studios out of the many, many studios in the world. Warner Brothers help with other studios by helping them produce movies and shows. Usually, all the studios work together because each studio has different sets and different props. For instance, Universal shot one of the movies at Warner Brothers sets, which was the movie Jurassic Park. I think this is sort of surprising because when do you think that all the studios are always trying to be the top studio? They probably are thinking about becoming the best of the best, along with helping each other. Warner Brothers have produced many successful shows and movies. Warner Brothers made a movie that helped the company's success greatly. Rin Tin Tin, a dog brought from France in World War I, was a star in the movie Where the North Begins. This movie was highly successful. Because of this, Jack, one of the Warner Brothers, enrolled the dog in more movies for $1,000 every week. Rin Tin Tin became Warner Brothers' top star. This movie was produced in 1923. Back in the early 1900s, movies used to be silent. It was like that until April 1927, when Warner Brothers stopped the silent film era with the production The Jazz Singer. That was what made The Jazz Singer very successful. It was the first film produced with dialogue in it. 
The jazz singer is a big part of film's history because it was the start of why films are what they are today. Warner Brothers also produced one of the most successful movies in the world, Casablanca, as well as Friends, Two and a Half Men, Harry Potter, Batman, Full and Full House, The Big Bang Theory, and lots more. The sitcom Friends, the actors made a million dollars per episode. The actors from Friends also are still making money when the show is being played on air, even though the show is over. Looney Tunes has benefited Warner Brothers' success too. The characters Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Speedy Gonzales, Sylvester, and Tweety are some of the most famous and recognizable characters in the world. Warner Brothers is actually known for Looney Tunes. Many of Warner Brothers' shows and movies are very well known. However, sometimes the films might not have done as good as hoped. Fortunately, lots of the films were very, very successful. Most of Warner Brothers staff member, plus director, animator, and actor like Chuck Jones, Fritz Freleg, and Mel Blanc, who I'll be talking about in a little, were major figures in the art and history of traditional animation and the Warner Brothers Company. I will talk to you about what their role in the Warner Brothers Company was and how they helped. Chuck Jones was an animator, cartoon artist. Screenwriter, producer, and director for Warner Brothers Company. He helped direct Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Chuck Jones created many of the characters starring in Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies throughout the late 1940s and 1950s. For instance, he created Claude Cat, Mark Antony, Pussyfoot, Charlie Dog, Michigan J. Frog. Also, his most famous characters: Marvin the Martian, Pepe Le Pew, Wild E. Coyote, and the Roadrunner. He stopped working at Warner Brothers in 1962. He didn't retire from Warner Brothers, though. He had a contract with Warner Brothers that said he could only produce movies for Warner Brothers. And when they found out that he was producing movies for another company, they fired him. Mel Blanc is different from Chuck Jones. Chuck Jones created the characters of Looney Tunes, but Mel Blanc was the voices of the characters from Looney Tunes. Mel Blanc was a big help for Warner Brothers. In 1935, he moved to California. A year later, in 1936, he was employed in the Warner Brothers Company. He was asked to be the voice of a drunken bull in the cartoon Picador Porky. Shortly after, he played the role of Porky Pig. Mel created Porky Pig's famous line, "That's all, folks." He also took over the voice of Happy Rabbit and then changed the name of the character to Bugs Bunny. He also came up with Bugs Bunny's catchphrase, "Hey, what's up, Doc?" Bugs Bunny eventually became a star. Mel's career for Warner Brothers was a huge success for him and Warner Brothers. Many voices of characters were created by Mel Blanc. His character voices were in more than 800 cartoons. Most of the cartoon voices were from Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunny shows. Mel Blanc stopped working at Warner Brothers around the 1960s. Fritz Freleg was an animator, cartoonist, director, producer, and composer. He was known for his job working with Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Fritz worked with other studios before working with Warner Brothers, and then returned to Warner Brothers in 1939. Fritz advanced some of Warner Brothers' greatest stars, like Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Tweety Bird, Sylvester the Cat, Yosemite Sam, and Speedy Gonzales. Fritz directed 266 cartoons, which is more than any other director in the company. During Fritz's time in Warner Brothers, he won four Oscars for the films like Tweety Pie, Speedy Gonzales, Nighty Night Bugs. And more were Oscar nominees. The show Biz Bugs, which was Frizz's cartoon, was an arrangement for Bugs Bunny show's success. He is, as well, the most honored director from Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers has changed a lot through the years they have been running. Some of these changes helped the company's success. Some weren't as helpful. The biggest change in Warner Brothers that was helpful is in the tour department. It is a new building called Stage Forty Eight. In Stage Forty Eight, the tour guide shows the people how the process of filmmaking works, script writing, casting, character designing, designing costumes, set production, editing, and putting sounds into movies and shows. The amount of tours has also changed because of Stage Forty Eight. The amount has gone up by around a thousand people. When I went to my site visit, I actually went inside the Stage Forty Eight and did some of the activities and saw some of the props from the films. Warner Brothers has made a lot of money through the years they've been running. Here's a chart of the net profit from some of the years.
Warner Brothers is right now the only studio that has exceeded over a billion dollars in the last 13 years. Previously, in 9 out of the 10 last years, they have been ranked number 1 or number 2 in profits. As you can see from all the slides, Warner Brothers has evolved and changed in a big way from when Warner Brothers was founded to now. They have produced many successful shows and movies, created new attraction building that increase the amount of tourists. The company has also worked with actors, producers, directors, and more, and have boosted Warner Brothers' success greatly. I guess we'll have to wait and see what Warner Brothers will face in the next few years. Thank you for watching my iMovie. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Here are some of the sources I used.